Revelation chapter 3. And you say amen when you get to verse 7. Amen. amen. This is the message to the church in Philadelphia. And the, the writer says, write this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. That's the minister in this case. This is the message from the one who is holy and true. The one who has the key of David. What he opens, no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. I know all the things you do. And I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews but are not, to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones I love. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. All who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God, and they will never have to leave it. And I will write on them the name of my God and they will be citizens in the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. <coughs> I thank you that your word is forever settled in heaven and that you, the Holy One, who is faithful and true, watches over it to perform it. Father, I thank you that you are well able to write it on our hearts and our minds that we might not sin against you, Lord, that we might always follow your precepts, that we might always walk continually in your presence in doing your will, Lord God that we might be pleasing to you. Lord, we worship you that we are called by your name. We worship you, Lord, that we can come here in, in spirit and in truth and be in your midst and have full access to you, Lord God. And Father, I'm asking right now that as I preach today, Lord God, that it would be not me but you, that these would be your words and not my words, Father. Lord, that you would write upon our spirits a new revelation of who you are, a new revelation of what we can be in you, Lord God. And Father, that we would never be the same after we leave this place. Father, that this church would be forever changed by your word and by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I want to talk today about a door that God opens. Amen. I read a story this week as I was preparing for this, this uh, ministry, and it was it just reminded me of, of this scripture, and I want to share it with you. There was once a young mother who wanted to encourage her children to be faithful, to practice their piano lessons. So one day she took them to the symphony where a great master was in concert. And after they were seated, this mother spotted some friends and she walked down the aisle to greet them. And her son, we'll call him Ross, was so impressed by this magnificent concert hall that he got up and decided to explore. Well, Ross found his way to a door marked no admittance. And soon the house lights were dimmed and the concert was about to begin. And this mother returned to her seat and discovered that Ross was missing. And suddenly the curtains opened and the spotlight was on a beautiful grand piano in the center of the concert uh, auditorium, the center of the stage. 
In an utter horror, the mother saw her son sitting at the keyboard, innocently picking out twinkle, twinkle, little star. And at that moment, the great master made his entrance. And he quickly moved to the piano and he whispered to the little boy, don't quit, Ross, keep playing. And then leaning over, the master reached down with his left hand and began filling in the vase part. And soon his right hand reached around to the other side of the child and he added a counter melody to what the boy was playing. And together the boy and the master made beautiful music and transformed a potentially disastrous moment into a wonderful creative experience. And when they finished playing, the audience broke out in thunderous applause. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. To me, the church is just like that little boy. We're here on earth and we're utterly amazed at the glorious creation that we set about exploring. We're amazed when we get saved because the world is a different place when you're saved, amen? It can be a dark, hard, mean place. But how many know that the sky is bluer, the air is cleaner, and there are so many things you didn't notice when you weren't saved that suddenly come alive to you when you're saved. And it's because of the presence of the master both in your heart and you can see in nature the wonders of God's majesty and creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, the world is watching the church. The world's watching you and I. And they, they know there's something different, but they can't quite figure out what is it that's so different. And they see us do certain things, and you know, they don't seem all that incredible. They don't seem all that remarkable. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Anybody can play that, amen? What's that? What's so different about that? But oh, when the master comes, hallelujah, it becomes a symphony. It's not just a simple melody, it's a symphony. And that's what you and I as believers, that's the effect that we have on the church. Hallelujah. And that is what we as a corporate body have on the, on the church, on the, on, the, on the earth. Amen. We make a difference. The church in Philadelphia was not too much like this church. It was not remarkable in anybody's eyes, but in the eyes of God. It was a big, it was a little fish in a big ocean. Amen. Much like this little boy in my story, it went unnoticed mm -hmm. until John's prophecy that we find here in Revelation chapter 3. History tells us that the original population of Philadelphia seemed to have been Macedonians. But there were some Greek Jews living there, and there was this little Christian church. It was one of seven of the known churches in Asia Minor. And the only one of the seven that received a blessing in John's revelation rather than a curse. Amen? Amen. Philadelphia was a town that was subject to constant earthquakes, which made the town's walls unsafe. It was a town that was always expending money to, be, to repair, which may be why this particular church and its members were very poor. This was a church that was defended its faith for over a hundred years. And how many know in first century, uh, the ancient world, it was a very uneasy relationship because here you have Judaism and the zealots who say they are the one true church, they're the chosen people of God. And then you have zealous Jews running after the Christians you have the Romans and the Greeks with their gods, and they were persecuting the, the, the church. And the church